a cool, crisp spring day in rural Illinois, Megan Sundin is busy. Inspired by her father, who was orphaned as a child, but found a family and so much more. He said that when he was adopted on the orphan train, the first thing his parents bought him was a pony and that that saved his life. So I kept trying to think, how could a pony save his life? <laughs> because we had so many horses that um, my dad had to sell a horse so I could have a pair of shoes. His life and hers would always revolve around horses and finding a way to give back. Was there a special moment that made you say, I have to do something? Yes. When my father died in 2010, our family dynamics changed drastically and we didn't understand what was going on. And I figured I'm a teacher at heart, I'm a certified teacher, so I thought I need to do something with horses that doesn't involve horseback riding. When you see that moment when, when a horse is helping a veteran, you see that connection. I know you're watching for it. What does that mean to you personally? It's very humbling. Um, it's interesting. Uh, there's, it, it behaves differently for every single person that comes through here. So some of the behaviors become very unique and stick out. And when we see that pattern, then that's when we really start to pay attention. There's something unique going on. Megan has more than 6,000 hours of training. She wants to be clear, while we're about to show you an overview of her equine assisted services, it is much more complex and needs to be left to the pros. Horses survived in the wild with their innate ability to read their environment, respond to nonverbal body language. This horse has not been trained for therapy, but reacts naturally to a veteran dealing with PTSD. Doc agreed to let us watch a session. Hello there, sir. How are you? Good. Good to see you again. Good to see you. I'll Good take a hug. Hey, how are you? Nice I'll take you. a hug. <laughs> Thank you for your service, sir. Oh, thank you for your support. So I was a combat medic with the 1st Infantry Division um, for the uh, first part of the uh, Iraq War. Um, I was a straight just infantry medic. So on the line with the guys. So you saw a lot of stuff? Quite a bit. Um, I had four tours, uh, mostly in Baghdad and uh, Tikrit, Mosul, uh, Ramadi, a couple of the uh, couple of good hot spots. Hmm. You come home, you can't help but bring some of that home with you, huh? Yeah, it was, uh, I had a long career, um, 10 years and two Purple Hearts, and just a lifetime of memories. There's definitely give and take. Um, I think uh, he wants respect much as I do, so, um, and I don't want to show any fear either, so I think it's kind of give him a little, he gives me a little, and uh, we check each other when it, when it comes to it, so. The equine therapy session begins. We're gonna start off with just giving you an opportunity to, to connect, reconnect and meet and greet and Doc and Megan invite me in. Again, for his privacy and hers, and the trust they have, will only show you a little of what happens here. What did you think about your experience? I said it kind of a calm mess for a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, felt kind of like a, a nice little connection with them. Mm -hmm. I kind of, I'd say that lingered for a few days. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I thought about it a lot that, that night when I went home, but it definitely, uh, definitely lasted for a few days. I kind of missed it, so. Mm -hmm. So you would have wanted to come back again? Oh, then? yeah. Quickly. Well, I'll be back the next day. More frequently. Mm -hmm. yeah. I gave you a challenge of what you thought was uh, your challenge to get over. And, and so that activity can then lead itself to other things. So based off of this week. She asks him questions week. and uses his answers to give him new tasks to try. And what were your thoughts when you were on your way here? Uh, let me see how he's gonna react to me today. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Seems a little bit more easy going today. 
Okay. Quite a bit of pain in there, so. I know you mentioned last week you thought that he picks up on that, that you were in pain. Watching for unique behavior, actions and reactions from both of them. So now this is the first time he's ever led him. And last week it was the first time he ever seen a horse. I noticed when uh, you took the lead rope and you started walking over there, he started making noises at you. Yeah. What'd you think about that? I don't want to be locked up. Doesn't he? Free spirits. Mm -hmm. I don't think he likes being leashed up very much. Mm -hmm. He's a big guy. Is that something that you can relate to? Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to be on my own or something. Okay. Gotta have a little mutual respect with him. An activity that I would like you to do is to go and, and take them into any part of the arena that you feel comfortable. And I want you to stand in front of him and hold on to his halter and put your chest against his head. And I want you to get in rhythm with his breathing. So close your eyes and find that rhythm. Two powerful and independent personalities trying to find a rhythm, trying to make a connection while commanding respect from each other. So you can see the horse isn't settling in yet. Once they connect, then they will have that, that connection. Connection. Important not just for the horse, but Doc admits since coming home, it's harder to relate with some civilians. People worry about, you know, being in line too long at Starbucks and, you know, waited 56 hours on combat missions, so, yeah, just little things like that. In a surprise move, I'm about to become part of the therapy. Will he trust me, a civilian, to lead him blindfolded through this obstacle course? What you're going to do is take him by the halter and you are going to listen to Gary's directions to get through. You're going to get through the communication. You're gonna get over the empathy and you gotta get around the presence. Okay. Perfect. Come a little bit to your left and come through the cones right here. Follow my voice. And you did it. Complete all the way through and back. Nicely done. <laughs> Nicely done. That was cool. Awesome, man. That was awesome. Okay, what was that? Tell me what that was like. That was different. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was fighting it all the way, but. Mm -hmm. He just kept listening. That was good. Hmm. Checking out his butt here. Mm-hmm. That was quick. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. You were, you were talking about a slogan in there. Can you tell me about that? Um. So a, a slogan that I've always had is uh, never above, never below, always beside. Um, with, with veterans, you never want to, never want to be above somebody. And uh, if, with a mutual respect, you're never below them. Um, you always want to be beside them, walking beside them, sh uh, showing them support. So um, it's something I've always tried to live by. Um, not, I'm not any better than any veteran, and uh, you know, um, any awards or anything I have or what I've done in the military, it's it, everybody has their job, everybody does their thing, and uh, I don't, I don't feel that I'm any better than anybody. So, uh, when veterans or anybody needs help, I, I try and show them that respect. Is getting this kind of help for you 
going to help you to help more vets? Too? I, I hope so. Um, there's a lot of guys that, that won't seek help, that won't go to therapy simply because they're they're worried it's going to be talking to somebody that doesn't understand them or uh, somebody to, trying to push pills on them. Um, you don't have to talk to him, and he's not going to shove pills down your throat. And uh, you know, there's something to be said about getting in in the ring with somebody that's 1,600 pounds. I mean, he's got a little bit of weight on me, so um, kind of helps you overcome some fears too. Yeah, he's not going to take any crap from you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think that I think that helps, and you know, uh, maybe maybe some other guys or gals would be able to benefit from that as well. Well, thank you for your service then and, and now, man. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. It's awesome. Thank you. Sundown at Sundance for our soldiers. Small steps to what healing happened here today. Many more small steps still lie ahead for Megan, veterans, and a horse named Smoke. Find out more at SundanceForSoldiers.org. If you like inspiring stories just like this, check out our YouTube channel, Gary Mativier, for more. Add the heart of the story with Gary Mativier podcast.